$1,000 for a mini PC sounds like a lot of money, but maybe there's something we're missing here. Our friends at Geekcom sponsor this video to take a look at the A9 Max, a mini PC that has a lot of power under the hood. 12 cores, 24 threads, the best iGPU you can get, and a bunch of other hardware that makes this really great for content creation and workstation level tasks. But of course, here at the Toasty Bros, we got a game on it and push it to the limits. Even though Geekcom sponsored this video, they want us to do whatever we can to this PC to max it out, see what its limits are, and show you guys under the hood what it looks like. So thanks again to Geekcom for sponsoring this video. We're gonna open this thing up like we do with many PCs, take a look at the ports, the layout and everything, open it up, see upgradability, and then we'll dive into gaming and workstation level tasks to show you guys what the limits are of this little computer. All right, so I see on the box here, we got 32 gigs of sodium, a two terabyte NVMe SSD, and we got, of course, the HX370. Yep, so the HX370, a Ryzen AI9 processor. Again, not really a huge fan of all the AI naming schemes that AMD's doing, but everyone's doing it, whatever. Regardless of AI, this is a really awesome CPU. 12 cores, 24 threads. Uh, you have the 890M mobile graphics, and everything inside the box is, uh, well, pretty straightforward. So inside the box, uh, look at this little power brick. It's so cute. How many watts is this? Can't be that much. 120. It's actually not, it's actually more than I thought it would be for the size of this little brick. Uh, but it is a little DC barrel jack. Um, we also have a HDMI, full size, of course. And then, for people who want to get fancy out there, because that's what's really cool about these mini PCs, you can mount them on the back of your monitor. Basically a base amount. Pretty sick. But yeah, the one thing I noticed or kind of stood out when I first unboxed this, it has like Mac Mini vibes. Like they're kind of going for that whole color scheme. Even the bottom plate of it looks very Mac Mini. Um, yeah. But this is a premium price mini PC. And in this video, we'll just show you guys what it is capable of and what it's not capable of. And uh, we'll show you guys the upgrade options as well. I gotta say too, really good build quality. I think this is all aluminum. It looks like the back might be plastic, um, but yeah, an aluminum type case, which is yes, very, very Mac-like. But I mean, this is crazy for the front of a mini PC. We have a lot of USB. So not only do we have all of these USB 3s, one of them is even a charging, a fast charging USB 3. We have a combo headphone jack, a pretty good size power button. And then on the left side of it, we actually have a full size SD card reader because I mean, what else are you gonna do with your Ryzen 9? Of course, content creation, editing, you're gonna be doing all kinds of things, 3D printing, CAD stuff. So having an SD card that's full size to be able to transfer between PCs and cameras and whatnot, it's pretty cool. On the right side of this PC, we just have a Kingsington lock. Wow, they did not slack on the ports in the back either. Of course, our barrel jack to get us power. We have an HDMI out. We have a USB type C, which is 40 gigabytes per second transfer and display port, and also display out and power delivery. We have dual 2.4 gigahertz ethernet ports. We also have another USB three. That's very fast. We have a USB two, another USB C that's also display out and that's 40 gigabytes per second transfer speed. And then another HDMI out. So I think you can have four monitors on this mini PC. That's pretty wild. Yeah, you can max this thing out. Hey, if you're gonna pay a premium, you might as well be able to do absolutely everything with this little mini computer. And the one thing to mention as well, it has Wi-Fi 7 on board. So you got the latest Wi-Fi 7 protocol to get fast Wi-Fi speeds if you want to run that. But hey, all in all, it looks like a really quality package for the price. Let's show you guys what you can do to upgrade this thing. Now, opening it up, you remove these little feet, which I will give them credit. Once you take them out, you'll see they have like little notches in them to make them easier to go back in afterwards. All right, I see what you're saying. So a little bit of adhesive, but they don't like just rip apart. Because yeah, some of the feet on these little mini pieces like literally come in two pieces and you're like, oh, I guess I don't need feet. All right, so four little Phillips screws. Easy enough, looks like we need PH1. Need a little baby one. And I believe once you take all screws out, it should just plop out. Just blow up. Should just explode. All right, so a little plastic bottom. Uh, I can see our part of our Wi-Fi here. So these are both Wi-Fi antennas on the back of this metal plate. And there it is, yay. All right, so we got a, ooh, a Lexar. That's a Lexar Gen 4, two terabyte NVMe mm -hmm. SSD. And of course, I mean, when you're spending this much money, they give us dual channel. Looks like we got 16 gig, 5600 megahertz. It's so dim, of course. Um, we got our, our little uh, CMOS battery there. Oh, look, it actually has an extra. Um, it looks like you could move this, so it could either be a you know, mini M.2 for like those little mini drives or maybe more Wi-Fi or something, or you can put it over here and you'll have another uh, M.2 port for your SATA drives. So if you want to go further, you need to take these out, these little standoffs, and then it looks like this whole board will come off, which there's not going to be like an upgradable CPU and nope. this. Everything's going to be soldered, so there's really not a reason to go back there. So yeah, for $9.99, this is what you're getting. 12 cores, 24 threads. You got the 32 gigs of RAM and the two terabytes of storage. I know for this video in particular, they are giving you a discount code using the link down below. I think it saves like six to 7% off, which is a quite a bit of money if you are buying one of these mini PCs. So use that link down below. But hey, we're gonna dive into some gaming, see what this iGPU can do, the 890M. We've tested it a few times, but not in this configuration with a really nice, well-cooled PC. See what the performance is like. And then we'll talk about some content creation tasks you can't perform with this PC as well.
So believe it or not, we are playing Apex Legends, and we're not actually running this at 720p, no, no. We're running at 1080p, and we're on uh, medium settings. So it's pretty sick, because this is, you know, technically, it's like a, like a AAA kind of esporty title. Not super hard to run, but it's an example of a game that we definitely tested back in the day on APUs, and uh, it would struggle to get 60, but now oh, yeah. we're getting 90 to 100. So, you know, AMD, just get this level of graphics on your desktop CPUs, maybe, you know? Let's, let's get to that point just now. Just a thought. Just a thought, it would be really cool. It would be pretty freaking cool. Yeah, for this, and I know it's allocated out of the gate four gigs of VRAM for the iGPU, but I know it like kind of auto-fluctuates, especially these iGPUs, so really any games that need more, They'll pull more from memory, um, so it doesn't really matter too much how much you allocate, but um, that's why it shows only 28 gigs of, uh, actually that'd be six then. Yeah, because there's 28 gigs of available memory, so that would be four, not six. Oh my God. They're, they're giving us everything. They say, you want more VRAM? Take it. Take whatever you want. If only the GPUs were like that, upgradable VRAM. Now, obviously, this isn't going to be the main purpose for this system. You wouldn't buy this for gaming because price performance wise, that would make no sense. Yeah. Uh, but it's always fun because we're Toasty Bros. We like to game on these things. We're going to show you the gaming performance of these IGPUs. He's team bagging. Uh, CPU temp isn't up there right now currently because, you know, Afterburner just doesn't want to acknowledge that it exists. Um, so we will do like an OCCT Bruh. little stress test to test this uh, cooling technology that they're really boasting uh, for this uh, mini PC. But the GPU itself is at 65C, so I have pretty high hopes that the CPU is going to be running equally as cool. Uh-oh. Oh, oh, he's... oh, I wanted oh, to kill your friend. no. Where are we going, Val? <laughs> no, where are we going? Where are we going, Val? Where, where's that core bit? Oh, <laughs> that's embarrassing. <laughs> really hard. So not about that one. If I hit the second one, he would have been dead. Yeah, uh, this is a controller player, 100% Okay, here we go again. Part two. Yes! Oh! Come on, come down. They're like, no. Oh, there's oh! a guy. I, do, I thought I heard someone shooting. Blood, <laughs> Blood Hunter. Yo, why is your mouth so big? What happened? It's me. Why no! You? Oh. you know what? That's it. That's it. Oh, look, the mouse is big again. <laughs> Yo! Hello. All right, well, we're going to take the penalty, but hey, Apex, very impressive on this uh, AI APU. Next game! All right, guys, we're in Fortnite Blitz Royale. Performance mode, unlimited frame rate, far few distance, and low textures. Far to few, ba do ba do ba do And we're going to drop in and see what kind of FPS we can get. We're kind of, we're like, all over the place. At one point, we're at 200, and at other points, we're at 70. So let's see what happens when we land. There's a lot of people coming here, and I feel like I'm not up against bots anymore. You finally graduated from Bot Academy. Oh. Oh, but you got the best pistol shotgun in the game. Oh, oh. I'm moving different. <laughs> ha ha, I stole your kill. But before uh, little Timmy comments down below, oh my god, Fortnite, are you kidding me? Well, I mean, if you're gonna play games on the side on a PC with an iGPU, these are the games you're gonna play. I thought you were about to phase can't claim trick shot on or something. Oh, someone else is pushing me. Oh, this is, this is gonna be farm right here, boom. Someone behind me. 12. Oh, are you kidding? You! Hell yeah. Ooh, right in front of him. The disrespect. Oh! Oh! Disrespected. The reload in front of him was crazy. Peter Griffin be doing things. We get wins in Blitz Royale. Uh, Fortnite running good. Apex running good. Those esports titles are fine. We'll throw in some uh, more demanding games to see what the limit is of this little iGPU. And then load up a Premiere file. We always like to do this with uh, PCs we think are more workstation focused level. Load up a Toasty Bros YouTube video, do some scrubbing, show you guys what the performance is like. But hey, you got a lot of courses threads to work with and that iGPU is no slouch in gaming. Let's run those other benchmarks and wrap this video up. So this Geekcom Mini PC is pretty cool. I mean, not only is it really compact, but the fact that we're actually able to play games on it and better than I thought. I mean, I'm gonna be honest, a lot of the APUs are kind of just like, you know you're only gonna play those really, really esports titles like Roblox and Minecraft. I mean, we played like Apex Legends and games like that, got decent FPS. And then of course, for the things this PC is actually designed for like Adobe Premiere, even doing like a Toasty Bros video, which is pretty hard even on our nice PCs, it was able to scrub the timeline and do everything really well at half playback. And of course, people 
people were wondering about the temperatures of this thing, so we ran it through an OCCT stress test for about 10 minutes on the CPU and RAM at the same time, and it did show that this thing does clock down a little bit when under sustained load. After 10 minutes, it went from about 4.2 gigahertz to 3.9 gigahertz. The watts dropped from about 50 to around 44, so you are losing a little bit of performance under a sustained load, but it's not something to be super concerned about because those 12 cores and 24 threads are still running at a very respectable clock speed for the size. And we didn't stop there. We tested this mini PC and some other games as well, so you guys can see some other options for this computer. CS2, 1080p low, got an average of 198.1 with a 1% low of 97.9. Cyberpunk, 1080p medium settings with FSR set to balance, almost got 60 FPS. A 51 average of 42 minimum, a max of 64. Liza P, a game I've been playing recently, 1080p low, around 70 FPS with decent frame times. And 3D Mark Night Raid, the iGPU benchmark on 3D Mark, got a score of 33,584. So all in all, once again, these mini PCs are not designed for gaming in mind. Can it do some gaming? Yes, it certainly can. But at $999, you're going to be getting this thing for workstation level tasks. And I think it does a really good job doing that. So if you want to learn more about this PC availability and use our discount code to save some money, links down below our affiliate links. They will help us out. Let us know what you think of the future of mini PCs, specifically these APUs, because they're getting really cool. And uh, maybe AMD will finally put them on the desktop. Let us know down below. But as always, we hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, make sure you check out our other two YouTube channels and also our Twitch.tv slash Toasty Bros. And do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe. See you guys in the next one. Bye bye. Now this little mini PC will be for sale at PCBros.tech, but we also have large PCs at PCBros.tech. Witcher, witcher, witcher. PCBros.tech. <laughs> Whatever you want. Mini, big, or large. Wicked, wicked. Please go toasty bros on checkout stage 3%. See you guys later. Goodbye.